Okay, people love to make collard greens for Thanksgiving. I only have two bulks of collard greens here because I'm just doing a demonstration video, but I recommend that you go out and get about five to seven bulks of collard greens. You're gonna need a lot, especially if you're making this for a family gathering or making it for Thanksgiving. You got a lot of people coming over. You're gonna need a lot more than just two bulks of collard greens because they will shrink up and you'll be left with a little bit of nothing. Make sure you got some bacon and some smoked ham hocks. Okay, get some smoked bacon. Here we have three smoked ham hocks. And the first step to this process, collard greens is a really long, stressful process, guys. Especially if you making some fresh collard greens. Okay, I'd rather get the collard greens out the bag. It's just much more simpler. Um, but you're going to rinse off your ham hocks. Okay, you want to get a pot. You want to fill it halfway up with water, not all the way up to the top because it will overflow. You want to place it over medium heat, medium low. Okay, you don't want the heat to be too high because the water will evaporate really, really quick and then you will have to keep going back and filling the pot up with more water. Okay, this is a really tough kind of meat ham hocks. It's going to take this a very long time to cook and to get tender to the part where it's falling off the bone. It's going to take approximately two hours before this gets tender. It takes a very long time. Okay, so make sure you let that cook. And while we let that simmer and cook, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on our collard greens. It's collard greens 101. Collard greens 101. Okay, now you know my videos are long, guys, but it's because I really want to educate you guys and I'm really detailed because I want to make sure that you guys really get it and fully understand what I'm doing. Now, this is a really long process. There's a lot of things that you have to do to prepare your collard greens. What you have to do is you have to cut them first and we're going to clean them. Okay, but a lot of people don't know how to cut them properly and they don't know how to clean them properly. So I'm going to show you guys now. You're going to take one leaf and you're going to fold it. Make sure that the stem is sticking out at the back just like that. Focus and look at what I'm doing, guys. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to throw the stem to the side. So fold the leaf in half, make sure the stem is sticking to the back, cut that off, and then fold it up like this, like a cigar. <laughs> and then you're going to chop it like that, okay? You can chop it however way you want to chop your collard greens. It's totally up to you. Some people cut it different ways. I'm going to show you folks how to do this again because you got some slow people out there that may not understand it. So for all you slow folks, I'm going to go over this the second time. <laughs> you're going to fold your leaf, make sure that the stem is sticking to the back. It's just a very easy way to cut the stem it's just easier to do it this way okay you're going to remove that stem we're going to be using some of those stems later too by the way okay i'll show you what we'll be doing with some of the stems later in a few minutes you're going to fold that up and you're going to chop it and i'm going to do this one last time focus 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 i'm going to show you guys one last time how to do this for you really really slow people out there <laughs> I'm just playing folks don't take it personal take one leaf fold it over make sure that the stem is sticking to the back and drill that bad boy with that knife and pull it off and that's pretty much it folks okay then we're going to fold that up make sure you get that big stem off you don't want that going in there you want to fold that up like that. And some people like to chop their collard greens different. I like to chop. I like mine to be a little small and then I like it to be, I like some big pieces as well. Just depends. If I'm not making that much, I'd rather be big than small. If I'm making a big bulk of collard greens, I make sure that I chop it really finely and make sure it's really small and thin. Okay, into little small pieces like that. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to get those stems, guys. Now, it's something that you do with the stems. You want to chop them up really, really small. The smaller that you chop them up, the easier it is for them to cook, okay? These stalks are really, really big. Okay, they're kind of thick, so it's going to take them longer to cook and to get tender. So the bigger they are, the longer it's going to take for them to cook. So you want them to be small, kind of like this size right here. Make sure they're about that size like that. People down south add them. A lot of people don't add them, but people down south add them. Now, there is another way that you can clean your collard greens. You're going to clean them the same way. No matter how you cut them, we're going to soak them in some salt water and vinegar solution, okay? But some people like to actually keep them big first and scrub them while they're big because it's easier to scrub them this way. 
instead of cutting them up and then scrubbing them, they keep them big like this. They let them soak in the salt water vinegar solution, scrub them, and then they cut them up the way we just did. Okay? You want to get you a big bowl. You want to add a few tablespoons of salt to that bowl. And then you're going to add a few tablespoons of vinegar to the bowl. About one-fourth cup of apple cider vinegar. And we're going to let these bad boys soak. So we got to get all that funk off of there. Because collard greens is a lot of things that get into collard greens. Like bugs and nets and flies. And it's a whole bunch of residue, dirt, mud, all types of nasty stuff getting collard greens. Okay? So we're going to place our collard greens in this bowl of salt vinegar. Place all the collard greens in the bowl of salt vinegar, guys. Mmm. We want these bad boys to be clean, okay? It takes time. We're going to let these sit for like an hour or two. You want to fill this up with water. And it don't necessarily have to cover the collard greens, but you want to fill this up with a nice amount of water. And you want to press the collard greens down inside of the water, okay? We're going to allow these to soak. So you're going to press them down. You're going to squeeze them. That's how you get that dirt and that funk out of it. You're going to squeeze it, press it down. You're going to squeeze it, press it down, squeeze it, press it down. But for now, we're just going to allow these to sit for one hour. Our ham hocks. Our boiling is going to take a while for them to get tender. So we're going to knock all this out the way while our ham hocks are cooking and getting tender. You're going to cut your onions down like this. You want your onions to be kind of small. You don't want them to be extremely big. But you can cut them medium size because they are going to shrink up when we fry them anyway. But I like to cut mine kind of small like this. Okay, and this is the way you want your onions to look. You want them to be about this size right here. Okay, like I said, they are going to shrink up once they hit the hot oil because we're going to be stir frying these first. We're going to braise our ham hocks and our vegetables. Um, you're going to cut your red peppers down like this the long way first. I'm going to cut it like that. You want to be kind of small. You don't want them to be really, really big, especially the red peppers. You're going to cut them sideways after you cut them the long way like this. Okay. So that's the way you want your red peppers and your onions to look. You're going to get about four to five strips of bacon and we're going to cut them like this. Okay, cut them like that. And we're going to fry these too. We're going to fry the bacon as well. You can use maple bacon for two folks. I know a lot of people was asking, can you use maple bacon for collard greens? But here we have our red peppers, our chopped onions, and our chopped up bacon. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the collard greens. I'm going to show you guys how to clean them. They've been sitting here soaking in the salt water vinegar solution. What you're going to do is you're going to scrub them against each other like that. you got to scrub them, guys. Get all that funk off. Look at that. Ugh, look at that salt water vinegar solution. Look how the dark now does it. Look dark. That's because of all the dirt that's coming off of the collard greens. Okay, we let them soak. All that dirt comes off. You want to scrub them against each other. Scrub them and you want to press them down. Squeeze them. That's the way I was taught to do them. Scrub them against each other. Press them. Squeeze them. And then we're going to drain all of that dirty water off. And you want to give them another rinse after this as well. Okay, but drain all of that dirty water. Mm, 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 mm. But look how clean and green they look. They look really fresh now, don't they? Really fresh collard greens. That's where our collard greens are looking right now, folks. Our ham hocks are done. Okay, they've been boiling on low heat for two hours. Look how tender they are. It takes a long time for them to get this way. Okay, it takes a lot of patience, but they will get tender if you allow them to simmer on low heat for two hours. Okay, we're going to be adding the bone to the pot of collard greens as well. It's a lot of flavor in your ham hock bones. Mm, 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 mm. And these are smoked ham hocks. This is going to give the collard greens lots of of flavor we're going to be using that fat too the fat is a lot of flavor in that fat okay you don't necessarily have to eat it i would not recommend that you eat all of that fat but it is a lot of flavor in that fat guys it's a lot of flavor in that fat okay look at that it's just falling right off the bone but it takes two hours it takes a very long time for it to get to this point guys 
the ham hocks is going to give the collard greens a lot of flavor and we're not going to chop up all of them we're going to chop up most of the meat but some of the meat we're going to leave whole okay like that big piece right there we're not going to chop the really big piece up that big piece right here we're going to actually leave whole you're going to leave some whole and you're going to chop most of it up okay so we're going to chop this up you're going to chop the fat up as well like i said we're not going to eat that you can eat it if you want it's up to you you might get sick though i wouldn't eat all that fat it's not good for you you're going to chop this fat up and this is just going to give the collard greens more flavor guys collard greens you have to give them a lot of flavor you have to season them pretty well and give them a lot of flavor the meat the onions the vegetables the seasons the broth all of those things that you put into the juice that you boil you them in is what give them flavor the more flavor that you give them the better they're going to taste can't stand no bland collard greens i'm gonna show you later guys how you know before you even eat your collard greens if they're well flavored or not mm. so you want to get a pot you're going to place this pot over medium heat and you're going to add three tablespoons of oil okay add three tablespoons of oil to the big pot and make sure that it's over medium heat we're going to be frying our red peppers and our onions and our bacon okay we're going to fry them so we're going to add them to the pot and then to that, what we're going to do is we're going to add about one to two tablespoons of minced garlic. I'll use about two if I was you. Use two tablespoons of minced garlic. And you're going to stir that up. Stir that in really, really well. Then we're going to add to that our chopped up pieces of ham hocks. We're going to add the bone to it as well. That gives it a lot of flavor. And we're going to add that fat to it. So make sure you add that. We're going to be braising our ham hock just to fry it a little bit. That'll toughen it up so it won't be too gooey and ooky okay frying it is going to basically hearten everything frying it is going to hearten the onions the bacon and the ham hocks you're going to stir that around stir it around real good and we're going to let this fry for about 10 minutes okay 10 minutes should be enough we're going to let the minced garlic the onions the peppers the ham hocks and the bacon fry for about 10 minutes that bacon the ham hocks the onions the peppers the minced garlic is going to give our collard greens lots and lots of flavor now what we're going to do is we're going to add the collard greens to the pot and what you want to do is you want to allow them to wilt okay wilt basically means to shrink you see how thick they are now they're going to shrink up oh look at that big piece i ain't got to take that out Okay, so we're going to allow these to shrink. Once these kind of wilt up, you want to stir these around. They're going to break down and they're going to shrink up. That's what wilt means, to shrink up. They're going to get kind of small. And then once they get small and they kind of shrink up and fry down a little bit, you're going to add some more collard greens. Okay, you're going to add like three, three bunks at a time. Okay, so add... Uh, a small amount first stir that up once they will add more okay once they shrink you're going to add your last bit of collard greens okay and you're going to stir this up and what we're going to get ready to do guys is um, we're going to get ready to add the chicken broth and add the juice and the seasons. But after you stir this up, what you want to do is you want to reduce the heat. After you fry everything and you get your uh, collard grains to wilt, you're going to reduce it from high heat to low heat. Okay, so if it was on medium high, make sure you get it down to low heat. Now we're going to add our five to six cups of chicken broth. Listen, if you don't got chicken broth, just use water and if you just have water you know because the purpose of using the chicken broth is to give it more flavor okay but if you don't have any chicken broth or any beef broth you're just going to have to use more bouillon cubes instead of using two bouillon cubes you're going to probably have to use about six bouillon cubes okay that's going to get the water to become really flavorful like the chicken broth all right so if you don't have any chicken broth and you only have water just use a little more bouillon cubes instead of just using two just use about you know five or six get at a nice stir look good already 
And you know, all the things that we added is basically just going to give our juice flavor. That's, that's all it is. Co cooking collard greens is very simple. Okay, it takes long. But it's really simple. Here we got our two bouillon cubes. But all you want to do is just sit it in some water and let it get tender. It's all about basically seasoning the water. That's all. That's all it is. All you got to do is get your collard greens, sit it in a big pot of water, and cook it on low heat. Allow the water to simmer down, and your collard greens are going to get really tender. But you just want to make sure that your water is flavorful, and you just add a lot of things to the water to give it a nice flavor. We add some onions and some peppers, and um, now we're adding uh, one tablespoon of garlic powder. Okay, we're going to be adding some seasoned salt and some pepper. Just want to add a lot of seasons to the water to give it some flavor. Can't stand no blame behind collard greens. I don't understand certain folks be making some blame collard greens. You're only going to use two tablespoons of seasoned salt. That's just what I recommend. Some people can't eat a lot of salt so if you can't have a lot of salt don't add no salt at all when it comes to measurements guys i'm just telling you the approximate or estimated amount to use it's totally up to you you know you really can't tell people how much to use or how much seasons to put in their food some people like a lot of pepper because they like a lot of sp spicy collard greens other people don't like sp spicy collard greens so they don't use a lot of pepper um, you're only going to use two tablespoons of white or brown sugar. We have white sugar today. So use two tablespoons of white sugar. Like I said, some people don't like the taste that sugar gives collard greens. So they only use like one teaspoon. It's totally up to you guys. It's up to your taste buds. I'm just telling you the recommended amounts to use. Same with the apple cider vinegar. I'm telling you to use two tablespoons. But I know some folks down south, they like their collard greens to be really vinegary. They like that vinegar taste. Some people don't like that bitter vinegar taste, okay? So, it, it really just depends on the person. And here, I'm just going to use one teaspoon of crushed red peppers. <laughs> like I said, it's optional. You know, it's not really any amount of season that you're supposed to use. Or there is no wrong or right way to season your collard greens. It's all about the person's preference. I know some people that have put a whole cup of cr crushed red peppers because they like Hot, hot collard greens, you know. You want to cover this with a top and you're going to allow it to simmer over low heat for about 45 minutes. I'll show you guys how it look when it's almost done. Okay, folks, so this is the way our collard greens look about 20, 25 minutes later. As you can see, the broth has simmered down and the collard greens have some color to them now. They don't look as green no more, do they? They look about a forest green. That's how you know your collard greens are almost done when they get dark green like that. Okay? And now they're all done, folks. Look at... Uh, and that's how you know that your collard greens... Remember earlier I told you guys I'm going to show you guys how you can tell if collard greens are well seasoned and flavorful? Look at that juice. Look at that juice. It has a color to it. It's like an orange color. That's how you know that collard greens are well seasoned and you have a lot of good juices and flavors inside of your collard greens when the juice is colorful like that. Your juice should not be blamed. I had somebody make me collard greens one time and the juice was like, it looked like clear pearl spring water. I'm like, did you put any seasoning in this? Why is the water clear? It's supposed to be juicy it's supposed to be colorful it ain't supposed to be clear look at them collard greens folks they're just so nice and tender and look at the ham hock oh my god this is real collard greens folks i said j love make the best i make the best philly boy j make the best collard greens in the whole wide world folks don't nobody ain't nobody messing with my collard greens if you try this recipe out, guys, you are going to love these collard greens. Like I said, I told you guys what to use, how much of it you want to use. It's totally up to you. Okay? But I would just stick with the recommended amounts that I advise you to use. Okay? But these collard greens are... Look at... Look at... When, when have you seen some collard greens look like that? The best collard greens on YouTube. Y'all ain't never seen no collard greens look like that. Like some flavor food like that. Look, you can look at these collard greens. You can tell that they have a lot of good flavor to them. Can't y'all? Can't y'all look at that and see how... Look at that. Look at, look at the juice. Look at the juice. 
Look at the juice. And like I said, guys, you can add the cayenne pepper I told you guys to add earlier. I did add that. I forgot to record that part. But that's not an ingredient that a lot of people use. They do that down south where they add a little bit of cayenne pepper. Gives it a little spicy taste. I like what it what it does to it. It really just makes the dish taste a lot better. But look at them. Look at them collard greens, folks. Mm, 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 mm. Southern soul food collard greens. That's that real good, well seasoned, flavorful collard greens. We don't make no bland collard greens around here, folks. Look at that. And I'm going to give this pot of juice to my mom. I'm going to ask if she wants this. She don't even have to season her collard greens. She can just take her collard greens, chop them up, clean them, and sit them in that pot of juice right there. She probably have to add a little more broth or water, but that juice right there is all she needs. She don't even got to season her collard greens. I'm going to eat some of this. It was so good, folks. These collard greens was bumping. Ain't nobody messing with I'm sorry. I'm cocky when it comes to my collard greens. Ain't nobody making no collard greens like me. These things are good. I hope you guys have a really good holiday with your family. I know that you're going to be inviting your family and friends over. I hope you guys enjoy the holidays. Be blessed. Be safe. I love you all. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. Happy Thanksgiving. This is how you make Southern Soul Food collard greens. Enjoy the holidays. Peace.